Hey students, welcome back. It's Mr. Bruin. In this short video, I'm going to offer an introduction to the big topic of animation. First of all, we're going to answer the question, what is animation? Imagine a, an alien came to you from another planet and they have never seen a cartoon. They've never seen an animation. They don't know what this thing is called animation. And they ask you, what is it? Give us a definition. What would you tell them? Well, I'd like you to pause the video right now and I want you to write out your definition. As you write out this definition for the word animation, don't use any resources. Don't look up the term on the internet, but instead come up with the definition by yourself. How would you define to someone or something who had never heard of animation? How would you define it for them? And write your definition down. You will be sharing this definition in a written reflection at the end of this video. So go ahead, pause the video and write your definition. Okay, so here's my definition. Animation is the art of combining a series of differing images that create the appearance of movement when played in rapid succession over time. Now, if we took a poll of all the definitions that were given that you just wrote down, we probably would find that a lot of you use the word move or movement in your definition. I've been teaching this class for 18 years. And in that time, when I've uh, had students give me their definition, most of the time, most of the students use in their definition, the word movement, because movement is at the heart of the definition of animation. Animation is art in movement. It is the art of movement. Uh, it is a way of making things that don't move appear to move. Whether that be pictures, drawings, uh, or clay, little lumps of clay looking like they're moving, Legos, people have made animations out of Legos. Whatever the medium, it's the process of making it look like it's moving that makes it animation. I also believe it's an art form. So in my definition, it says it is art, uh, but it's an art of combining things in such a way that they look like they're moving a series of differing images, each image or frame that we might, we might say frame each frame in the animation needs to differ slightly from the one before it and the one after it in order to create the appearance of movement. And again, we often call those frames individual images that make up the whole. Time is also a really important element. We know that in order for there to be the appearance of movement, there needs to be the passage of time. And also those frames need to move and change quickly. So it's a rapid succession or rapid series of changes over time. So all of these ideas come together to create this idea of animation. It's all about movement. In fact, I'm going to suggest that this is one of the most important things to remember in this class is that it is the quality of the movement that matters the most, not as much the artistic quality of a particular drawing or frame. I often ask my students, how many of you think you're artistic? Usually about 50% or more of the class does not raise their hand. They don't think of themselves as being an artist or being uh, having artistic uh, skill. And so I usually encourage them at that point and say, you know what, that's okay. It doesn't matter because it's more about learning how to create the appearance of movement. That's more important than being able to draw a perfect picture. In fact, sometimes those who have a real artistic ability, sometimes are at a disadvantage when learning how to do animation because they labor so much over the individual frames that they never get the animation done. So I'm going to suggest again, that it's the quality of the movement that matters more than the artistic quality of an individual frame. So how do pictures move? How do we create animation? How do we make it look like? individual frames are actually moving. Well, we know that the pictures don't actually move. We know it's a, it's an illusion, but how does that illusion happen? Well, it's something called persistence of vision. Persistence of vision is a trick 
of the human eye and the brain when we look at images. And here's how it works. It's an illusion that is created by this physical property of the eye, of the human eye, called persistence of vision. Let's look at it more closely. Persistence of vision works like this. Light enters the eyeball, okay? And that light is then focused on the back of the eye, which is called the retina. And here we have a little picture of it. We can see here on the far right side, uh, this is the retina. It's on the back of the eye. It's where the nerve connects the eye to the brain. And the light comes through the eye and it focuses on the retina. And that's how we can see. But with persistence of vision, and this is where the, the, the magic happens, the brain reads and interprets the image, but then the brain retains or holds onto that image that it sees slightly longer than that image is actually registered on the retina. So there's kind of a delay, okay? The light comes through the eye, focuses on the retina, the brain receives that information, but then the brain holds on to that image a little bit longer than it's actually there. And so that creates what's called persistence of vision, which gives us the ability to see animations. It's kind of like the different frames that we see are kind of blended one into the next. And we get this, um, we get the appearance of movement as a result. Now with this, uh, after you watch this video, I'm gonna share with you another YouTube video that shows an excellent example of how persistence of vision works and you'll be able to understand this concept a little bit better. So after this video, watch the other one that I share with you as well. So what does it take to be an animator? Well, it takes a fascination with the way things move. Because again, I've said movement is what animation is all about. So you want to study things uh, and the way they move and what they look like when they move so that you can better uh, replicate that movement in your animations. This takes sharp observational skills. You have to really be able to look at the world around you and see how things move. It takes even a willingness to be an actor. For example, if you want to say, well, how does a person look like they're throwing a ball? Well, you might want to actually look like you're throwing a ball. Throw a ball. What does your body do? What does your arm do when you throw a ball? Well, if you act that out, it's going to help you think through the movement of a person when they're throwing something and that'll help you animate it. It takes some problem solving skills. A lot of times the, the software that we use or the processes that we use to create animations are somewhat complex and so you have to just be willing to solve problems and figure things out. And this also takes a lot of patience and perseverance. If you think about it, an, an average animation is usually 30 frames per second. So if you have a uh, animation that is even just one minute long, that's 60 seconds, 60 times 30, well, that's a lot of frames, okay? And each one of those, if each one of those is drawn separately, or each one is a separate picture that is taken and then put together, all of that process takes a very long time. It takes a lot of patience. I also want to offer a few tips and techniques as we begin this class and we start doing animations. Uh, first of all, when you're doing your animation, you want to focus on the movement, not on creating precise drawings. I already kind of said that. Uh, it's really more about movement than it is about perfect drawings. Remember to make very small changes from one frame to the next frame. One of the mistakes I see beginning animators make is that they're, they make too big of change from one frame to the next, and so there, therefore the animation starts to look very choppy, disconnected, really doesn't look very smooth and you don't get the results you want. So you make small changes. When you're using, when you're animating, you also want to save and test your animation very often uh, so that you don't lose your work. And it just takes lots of practice to become a good animator. So that's it for this uh, short introduction to animation. Uh, we're going to, after this, get started in making our first animations.